Well, I'm in Edinburgh to launch one of the most ambitious packages of financial service reforms uh, that we've had for decades. And I'm doing it in Edinburgh because the financial services industry employs over 160,000 people in Scotland when you include all the uh, related businesses. So it's a huge employer across the UK. Uh, we want the UK to be the most competitive place in the world for financial services. There are great companies right here in Edinburgh. And so this is the place to make that launch. Is it reckless to be relaxing financial measures at the minute? Are you effectively sowing the seeds of the next financial crash? No, because uh, we have learnt the lessons of that crash. We've put in place some very important guardrails, which will remain. But uh, the banks have become much healthier financially since 2008. We put in place a process uh, so that financial issues can be resolved, which we didn't have before. But on that basis, we also want to make sure they can compete with other financial centres, whether it's the United States or Asia. And Scotland is in a fantastic place to do that, and that's why these reforms will make a big difference. Chancellor, we hear from Scots every single day about how they're going to cope financially this winter. Would you like to take this opportunity to apologise to them for the mess that the Tory government has made of the economy? Well, what this Conservative government is doing is the most important thing for families in Scotland, which is to bring down inflation. Because the thing that people worry about is the cost of their weekly shop going up. Uh, what I announced in the autumn statement was the plan that will bring down inflation from 11% now to just under 4% in about a year's time. That's going to make a big difference to families in Scotland. I think what they want us to do is to carry on with that plan steadily, sensibly, and to make sure that these very challenging times get behind us as soon as possible. Let's move on to Conservative peer Michelle Moore. Was corruption involved in the awarding of those PPE contracts? Well, I'm not familiar with what happened. What I do know, as I was chair of the Health and Social Care Select Committee, was that there was a national emergency to source PPE for doctors, nurses, care home workers up and down the country. And the country would not have forgiven ministers if they hadn't done everything they can. But the decisions as to who got those contracts were not made by ministers, they were made by independent civil servants.